In this episode, you will learn how to configure parameterized tests in Swift testing. Here I have my series of tests that I built from this Swift testing series. Today I want to focus on this one product from Cart uh, from this removing test suite. Let's go back here just to give some context. So remember that in earlier episodes we refactor everything uh, to centralize the test data because uh, Swift testing is capable to run in parallel all your tests at the same time. Okay, so here we have uh, product one, two, three. Okay, those products are just representing the uh, you know the raw data. Okay, the products. But here in car items we are adding product one, well product zero, one and two. Okay, and all of them or each of them, sorry, has a different quantity. Okay. So the goal is that if I want to remove all items, that means that I will remove everything, okay? This car item piece. That's basically what we want. Or in this case, for example, if, if we call remove all, well, it doesn't matter the amount. We not, we're not subtracting one by one. We're just killing everything, okay? And then the expectation is, first off, let's say if we remove this, Okay, in this case, the expectation is to having two uh, car items and the total quantity should be three because we removed the first one. Okay, so that's the goal of what we want to test here. Let's go back. Yeah, so uh, yeah, again, uh, yeah, I'm removing in this case product zero. Okay, and then I'm, I'm calculating the quantity, the remaining quantity. I'm expecting two items. Yeah. And the quantity should be three, as you saw. Now, this is hard coded to just review uh, product zero. But what if I want just to double check other products? If you, let's say, uh, want to also review what will happen if you remove a product one and product two, well, maybe you have two options. One is copy pasting, yeah? Copy pasting everything, and let me do this just for that, and then just copy, you know, just changing this to product one, and well, do the respective calculation. I don't know. I think for this one, we should expect four, and then do the same for the other, right? Uh, and yeah, of course, what uh, part? Let's call it two, and for this one, let's call it one. Okay, um, and yeah, I move on with an uh, n number of uh, tests that you want to replicate. I mean, this is one option, but the problem is that, that you're becoming a long list of verbose and repetitive testing, okay? And if for some reason you need to change the configuration of your test, now you need to change n number of tests. This is not a deal, okay? So we are not going to do that. Let's go back to the arena. Okay. The other option is like uh, creating a for loop or a loop here inside and then try to review uh, each element. Okay. However, that's not a good practice for one reason. Uh, we are trying to keep as minimal logic in our test. Why? Because it's a test. It's not code. Uh, and then we just need some uh, sorts of input and then do something internally and getting an output, a result. We don't care. We, we shouldn't do extra logic here. And, and I would like to avoid that. So in exit tests or maybe other frameworks, you don't have other choice. You just need uh, to duplicate your test or doing a loop. However, Swift testing is... Uh, providing a great feature for that called parameterized test. It's really simple. So the logic for this is just uh, using the, uh, this test macro. This test macro has uh, certain features such as uh, adding tags or making a test serialized for some reason, etc. But one of those things is that you can provide arguments. And those arguments are basically transforming your test into a series of tests. Let me see, uh, let me explain that in a better way. 
For example, here I will uh, call something called our arguments. Okay, and this series of arguments will basically uh, represent a series of inputs that I want to review. Okay, so these inputs will represent all those uh, products that I want to test, okay? So instead of creating a, uh, a duplication of my test, I can just add the inputs, all the series of inputs that I want to review and keep this test as it is, okay? And then just uh, instead of uh, calling explicitly, in this case, product zero, I can just call a product and that will be it. So here, the only thing we have to do is just uh, creating a list of data that we want to test. For this case, I want to test product zero, products one, and products two, okay? Those are the, the products I want to review, all right? How then can we pass this series of arguments into the test? Well, now the test requires to provide uh, parameter okay so yeah this is uh, the representation of a parameter in this case if we are talking about products let's call it product and use a product all right now the test is recognizing that okay I will run a test for this product I will run a second one with this one and a third one with this one Okay, so you can create an N series of uh, arguments and the only thing here is just providing the argument uh, for the individual test and everything else will be done by Swift testing. So remember, Swift testing is running all your tests in parallel by default. So that means this uh, single test will become three tests run in parallel. Okay, and each of those tests will provide a specific product here. Okay, so now instead of hard coring the product, we can just provide product directly. Okay, and well, this is not fully done, but let me run the test just to see a few things. Okay, let me go here and see what happens. Of course, this is failing because we are passing now uh, different products and the expected quantity is different, okay? So yeah, the car store is still the same because we are testing uh, one by one. Uh, technically, we'll have three. We're always expecting two, two car items in the list after removing one. But let's see what, what is going on here. So in some case, this the result is four but we are we are always waiting uh, a quantity of three as uh, the final result. This is true only for the first one, but not for the rest. So what can we do then? I mean, if we have a different uh, expectation quantity, it is great that uh, Swift testing is also providing a great uh, feature for that. So here in arguments, we're just passing single values, but instead you can provide uh, a tuple. And in a tuple, you can provide n numbers of combinations of values. So instead of having just, just a single value, let me add this, um, we wanna pass the expected quantity here, which is three for this, for this particular case. For the second one should be five and for the third one should be four now again the test will require that this tuple is matching the number of parameters in your original test so here we should add another argument let me do this and we'll call this one as expected quantity Okay, and I will put it in, okay? And now we can just replace this expected, this uh, hardcore three value with expected quantity. And now let's run this. Okay. 
great. Well, for some reason, um, for some reason, it is still uh, showing errors. Let me clean this up because maybe it's an issue because I'm using Xcode 16 beta. Okay, let me try one more time. There we go. Yeah, the test is now passing. And again, uh, you can add n number of uh, arguments that you need for your test. Uh, just remember that you should do, uh, you should add the, a tuple in order to uh, swift understand that you want to uh, create a series of tests uh, for all for each uh, of those values. So yeah, that's a great tool if you want to, you know, uh, avoid a duplication of testing uh, for this particular case i can add even more and more and more products but as you can see the logic is the same so for those cases when you want to validate a series of uh, inputs but the test is the same well you can use parameterized test that will be it for this episode remember don't forget your like and subscribe because there are even more videos coming up about swift testing that's it for me Thank you so much and have a great day.